Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I can't think of a text in Scripture that I love more than this one. Come to me, all who are heavy laden, who are burdened, who are tired, who are worn out, and I will give you rest. Don't you love that text? It is not only a beautiful text, but it's also one that has been so abused <laughs> that it's almost pathetic. Oh my. In the verses just before this, Jesus is saying, but what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. This, this text is set in the context of ministry. And ministry is what we are called to do, not just me. Because we are all ministers. I'm called to a public ministry, you're called to a private ministry. We're called in the midst of a mission field. In fact, we are called in the world's most difficult mission field. Were it not for the Holy Spirit who was given to us in our baptism, we would have no hope of living out our mission. But the Holy Spirit was given. And with the gift of the Spirit comes the gift that each of us has for our mission. We are to play in the marketplace. We are to play the flute in the marketplace. We are to dance in the marketplace, which is code language. We are to take our mission into the marketplace. But that's not easy, is it? We find all sorts of reasons not to. With St. Paul, we scratch our heads and wonder, why is it I do what I don't want to do? And don't do what I do want to do? Do do? <laughs> I keep on putting do up a do up a do up at the but that oh well. Wouldn't you love a congregation that lived out its mission? Do you know how exciting it is to be part of a congregation that lives out its mission? Do you know how exciting it is when people gather together at before service and after service and during the week and they talk about the wonderful things God is doing through them in the marketplace? playing the flute, and dancing the dance. You see, this beautiful text is meant for people who are tired from working.
not tired from doing nothing. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote a letter to Eberhard Bethke from Tegel Prison in 1944. He said, we are moving toward a completely religionless time. People as they are now simply cannot be religious anymore. Even those who honestly describe themselves as religious do not in the least act up to it. So they presumably mean something quite different by religious. That was 1944. You see, our text is not an excuse to let someone else do the work. But it is a comfort and a promise for us who do our best to live our mission. You see, when we, when we talk about rest in the context of Scripture, we talk about shalom. And shalom is a time of healing. It's a time when everything is going to be the way it's supposed to be. And we are healed for that time. And the way that everything is supposed to be is when we are all living out our mission. Now, there are the, the, the stool, that is, the mission has three legs. I just did four legs. Oh, well. Three legs. Prayer, study, and work. Our mission is based in prayer, study, and work. Prayer is our worship, study is our study of God, and work is our mission. playing the flute, and dancing the dance in the marketplace. If our souls are ever uneasy, if we're not quite happy with how our life is going, it's a prayer study work problem. If the mission is there, but we're still uneasy, it's a prayer and study problem. If our knowledge of God is good and our mission is good, but we're still uneasy, it is a prayer problem. Let me move it from the local to the national. Many of us just sigh when we think of how badly this country is turning out in our time. Either we say there's nothing we could have done about it, or we could say we as, we as Christians in this country, or we say we haven't lived out our mission. And now the mission will be even harder. We talk over the July 4th weekend about one nation under God, indivisible. But the question is, is it under God? Well, yeah, the nation is. The question really is, are we? It's, it's one thing to shout slogans as true as they may be. It's another thing to live out our mission to make our churches strong, our community strong. Because when we live out our mission, life becomes exciting. 
that it all begins in worship. It all begins in our prayer life. You see, in, in the history of the church over time, we're just one link in a chain. And that chain, as anyone knows, is as strong as the weakest link. If you think back 150 years to our ancestors in this congregation, how strong they were. I didn't say perfect. I said strong. And how they sacrificed and fulfilled their mission in building the church and filling that church. If we would like to sense that strength again, then we need to live out our mission. And our mission begins in prayer and is deepened in our Bible study and in our willingness to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, if that wears you out, God bless you. And then our text today is for you. Come to me, you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. That's what we want to hear when the burden of ministry is weighing us down.